I just wanted to touch a little bit on the syllabus because okay. this is I've always found this to be a really important document. Um, you know, the way Pius IX structured it, he structured it in a very authoritative way. It's mm -hmm. a big, giant list of things that are evil to believe. Yeah. Um, but is the syllabus of errors considered to be part of the magisterium of the church? Considered by whom? Whoever the authorities are. Well, the <laughs> who are the judge? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, see, the problem you've got with this, firstly, you know, there's the extraordinary magisterium and there's the ordinary magisterium. Now, the extraordinary magisterium are things like the definitions of the councils, the creeds, of which we have four. Most people don't know that. They only think we have two. Uh, the infallible proclamations of the popes, of which there have been a total of three. That is the extraordinary magisterium. The ordinary magisterium is the doctrinal output by the church. Now here's where it gets a little weird. On the face of it, nothing could be more authoritative within the ordinary magisterium than the syllabus of errors. Mm -hmm. But you'll have things like the letter of the Holy Office to Father Feeney that apparently can trump the um, can trump the de the uh, declarations of the uh, definitions of councils. You have what I like to call creeping infallibilism, which is since 1870 in the definition of of, uh, the, of infallibility, more and more stuff in the popular mind becomes part of the ordinary magisterium. Encyclicals, yeah, I can see that because that's a direct communication. And you'll notice that the syllabus quotes mostly encyclicals. Allocutions, that is mere speeches, interviews on planes. And then it's not just the Pope and the Holy See. What's been added to it by, again, nothing authoritative has stated this. It's just been done. Um, bishops, uh, conferences, their, their pronouncements on things, then individual bishops, it just, no one has ever authoritatively defined what the ordinary magisterium is. How do you know there is an ordinary magisterium? Because they always said there is. <laughs> That's why. And they always talk about it. And Who's I have they? No, they, well, I mean, the popes and the Holy See. You know, the, the, the Holy Office, uh, or sorry, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. I mean, what, what does that mean, talk about it? Were they, well, they giving an interview it. about it and they mentioned no, it? No, well? I mean to say they'll mention the Ordinary Magisterium in passing. Uh, they'll say we know from the Ordinary Magisterium and so on and so forth. But frankly, it has never been concretely defined. Uh, which is something, and all joking aside, and I do hope, ladies and gentlemen, you realize I've been joking a lot. I'm in a, in a funny mood today. Probably comes of it being the first of the O antiphons today. O sapientia, O wisdom. Anyway, um, the truth of the matter is that there is an ordinary magisterium, but we do not know its bounds. And that's very, very bad. Yeah. You know, the dubia that the four uh, cardinals proposed. Yeah. That's very much produced, I mean, the, the, the conditions produced by this weirdness are what produced the four questions, the four dubia. Because, all right, well, you know, what's authoritative, what isn't? What's real, what's memorized? If a pope contradicts prior teaching, and more than that, prior infallible teaching, why, how can he do so? How can he do that? Upon what authority? That's what he's being asked. And he won't answer. Not yet, anyway. It could be he's going to come up with something really wonderful that will make us all wow with both its holiness and cleverness. You didn't say that last show. You, you predicted he was not going to. Well, that was my concrete prediction. <laughs> this is just a surmise. Oh, okay. uh, maybe... Maybe, maybe we're in the end times. Maybe Aslan's coming back. You don't know. I don't know. All sorts of things could happen. Maybe I won the lottery. We're, look, we're looking to you for answers. Oh, that. Well, last, 
Last week I was speaking authoritatively. <laughs> this week I'm shooting from the cuff. No, I mean, he's all joking aside. And again, I could certainly be wrong because I can't read the man's mind. But my suspicion is that he, he, he won't answer it because he can't answer it. Um, there's no answer to give those questions, except I'm wrong. And he's, I think he's too humble to give that kind of an answer. Wow. Okay, that's it uh, for this show. But before uh, we go, I have to tell you guys a little secret. I love when you guys send in questions. Because when you send in questions, that means I don't have to spend time thinking up good questions. And oftentimes, you guys submit better questions than what I could come up with myself. So please keep on sending in the questions. Thank you so much. And I, we'll see you next time. I have to add one thing, though. This is our penultimate podcast for the year. 2016 is, is staggering on to its inevitable end. And little baby New Year 2017 is already in the playpen, getting ready. So it's been a great time so far, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I, you know, again, forgive me if you're at all scandalized by my levity in dealing with these things. But I'll leave you with a, uh, a thought from my late lamented father. You can laugh or you can weep. And laughing is so much more discreet. Merry Christmas. Thank you.